Yes. Okay. Lacrosse. 10% skill and 90% flow. <laughs> flow, there's no real definition, but it's defined on an inside lacrosse forum, is the essential piece to a lacrosse player's look. Having a nice amount of hair that sticks out of the back of your helmet signifies flow. <laughs> now why is this important, you ask? Because Maryland is the home of lacrosse. It's played all over the region, and the University of Maryland has the number four team in the nation. So today I'm going to talk to you about how lacrosse came to be, how it has created its own culture and style, and how it is portrayed in the media. So it was created by Native Americans all on the eastern coast. There were a couple different ways that it was played, one of which was that the goals were about a half a mile apart, and there could be up to a thousand players. Since so many people would never see the ball, they actually were there just to hit other people and start fights. <laughs> which is why lacrosse came to be known by some of the Native Americans as the little brother of war. Now, lacrosse has come to be dominated by white, middle, and upper class players still all along the eastern coast. Now, lacrosse is the second fastest growing sport in high school in the nation, following only bowling. In the past decade, there have been over 2,500 new, uh, new uh, teams. And um, in college, the percentage of high school or of lacrosse players who graduate is about 80. Now, have you ever seen one of those guys walking around who's wearing a fitted hat and there's hair coming out of it? He's wearing a lacrosse penny, maybe some plaid shorts, and even moccasins, or like flip flops with calf eye socks? Yeah, it's called a wax bro. With divine inspiration, I am proud to introduce to you my newest addition to lacrosse, the Slow Bucket! <laughs> seeing the rest of that video, it's hysterical. So that, that video is part of a video series that's actually sponsored by a lacrosse company called Warrior. And the, the whole thing kind of shows, you know, that the lacrosse culture is really ridiculous, it's really funny, but it also still promotes the whole thing. Now, on that same forum where I found the definition of flow, in the same thing he defines other lacrosse terms and what lacrosse players should be wearing on the field. He talks about tilt, which is how you're supposed to have your helmet tilted all the way down so you see through the top slot. He talks about the helmet you should be wearing, the pads you should have, how all the color schemes should match, and how you should, your socks and cleats should match and your socks should always be calf high. Again, it's really funny, and, um, but it also just shows how seriously they take it. Now, one last website about bros is something called Bros Like This Site. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of it. Um, it's a little bit inappropriate, so I'm not going to bring it up. But, again, very funny, but it starts to go to a darker side. It kind of shows that lacrosse bros are not really the nicest people, they're not kind, they're extremely full of themselves. <clears throat> the media feels the same way. <clears throat> lacrosse came to the media spotlight in 2006 with the Duke lacrosse rape case. Three, la three lacrosse players were accused of raping an exotic dancer. <clears throat> They were never charged and never convicted, but it caused lacrosse to be analyzed by the media. Many articles came out portraying lacrosse players as self-entitled meatheads. They were described as people, as rich people who had finally found a sport where they could hit each other and pretend to be better than others. They blamed this culture for the rape case and for other problems with lacrosse teams. But at the heart of the sport, <clears throat> lacrosse is a sport. And you cannot blame lacrosse for the actions of its players. So in conclusion, lacrosse was created by Native Americans and is played today in Maryland and other, other parts of the East Coast. It is a culture dominated by lax bros. And in the media, it's not portrayed very favorably. But overall, we should all go out and support Maryland lacrosse as they take on the ACC tournament and then the national tournament. Thanks.